face straight up struggling. I'm uh, currently on my way from the Smoky Mountain back to Nashville. I'm struggling. It's a long story. It's been a long journey. It's been five years since I left New York. Five years, four years. Four, four years. Four years since I left New York, but I was preparing for like two years in New York before I left because I knew I was going to go do a comedy. What a shout out to Aaron Cleary and uh, the book reconnaissance man. I'm not getting paid to plug that. I'm just telling you it's a good ass book. Anybody out there ever wanted to hit the road, maybe move, but they're not sure where. Or if you're young and just trying to find your way in life, it's a great book. It really was. When I read it, I recognized that I partially did it when I was younger, but I didn't get to go thorough enough, right? So. Constance me, it's available on Amazon or assholeconsulting.com. Shout out here. In this video, we're not going to go too, uh, too deep other than to, to take you back. Before I left New York for about a year, two years, I was gradually learning how to build a YouTube channel. And at the time, I was, uh, I was very, I was new to MGTOW as we know it or had come to know. I had all my life sort of lived with a MGTOW type of philosophy. Um, but what was interesting was like as I was, I was learning a whole lot of new things at the same time as kind of talking about how I related to it. But then at the same time, I was also learning about narcissistic abuse and identifying, learning to identify in people in my life and learning how to get better at uh, managing myself in relation to that. I was also struggling because I knew I wanted to move to Florida, so it was hard to really like hard to really focus. It's also hard to really gain a clear uh, a clear picture. See, I thought I didn't want to be with anybody anymore back then, right? But it's kind of like a half truth. But it's, it's taken a really long time to, to really unpack it all for myself and get to see cleanly where my issues are in it and where they're not. But um, all the way back then, I was talking a bit on YouTube about working to get an album recording. A music that I believe did uh, been going their own way just might happen to enjoy. I wrote it I started writing it when I was 19 after me and a friend had taken a trip to Nashville considering moving there. In our heads we were moving there. We were only in Nashville for about two weeks. We stayed at this uh, this hotel, this motel it's kind of roachy on Murphy for a road called the Drake Motel. It's alright. It, 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 it's, it's good for what it is, you know. That's my take. But if, you, if you're familiar with Nashville, you know that it's got this sign out there that says, Stay Where the Stars Stay. It was in an old movie uh, called The Thing Called Love, subtitled Stand By Your Dream with Sandra Bullock. You know, Dolly Parton did a music video there. Uh, there's a couple other things. I'm not too sure, but those are the main things, you know. So, uh, this trip, some things happened. And uh, at the end of that trip, before leaving, I found myself standing outside a gas station watching a group of guys 
pour a gallon of gas into a car, mostly dumping it all over the ground. Steering at a bumper sticker that says, life's a witch and then you fly. And then I came back to Tennessee about a year ago. And within about three weeks, I was back out in Nashville for the first time in 15 years. And then that very first day, I saw a sticker that said, Magic happened. Same, same basic design. Like, you know, you've probably seen it out there somewhere. It's like the purple background and the white letters with like the, the like the star is the X or whatever. The crescent moon is the C, that kind of thing. So anyway, from there to here, I have managed to get a few songs recorded for you. It's taken me a long time to figure out how to keep getting enough of my problems solved to be able to do this. So to those who contributed years ago, if you're seeing this, thank you so much for contributing all the way back then. It's my apologies it's taken me so long to do it. If you're just not tuning in now, um, link the track will be below. Uh, or to, 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 the, to the EP. There are going to be three tracks. Um, and if you'd like to show support, you can uh, Cash App, Venmo. You can, uh, I got a, a t shirt link. You can buy a t shirt to support the music. Um, just, just, just commenting in the comments section. Giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel helps me to uh, further move this along. I do have to pay respects to MGTOW because that's how this, uh, that's how Mig ingraining MGTOW, the MGTOW way, MGTOW philosophy more deeply into my mind is what has allowed me to be able to sustain this long period of growth that I've been in, right? Again, a lot of the ideas of MGTOW, I was already sort of on my own felt that way, ascribed that way. It's not hatred of women. So also, I feel the need to call out Andrew Tate and uh, Sneeko as it relates to the red pill. So, Nico, you're doing the right thing standing up for family. And Rolo, he did kind of advocate for vasectomies. I'll say that I briefly considered vasectomy and then just said, it, well, no, I just have penis control. You know, the reality is, man, I found that my life is more simple with less, especially as it relates to women. Um, which is why I'm a more Christian kind of take, right? But I also have to say to, to Mr. Tate, who is selling a product called The Real World, The Real World implying that escaping the matrix via Mr. Tate's programs and philosophy and teachings, you will be able to live in the real world and have a higher quality of life. We have to take it back though to what are we trying to escape? All right, the matrix. And if we're going to refer to it as the matrix, we gotta remember the way Neo tapped himself out of the matrix was by taking the red pill. So, this, I guess, is my reintroduction into this space. My name is, my real name is Gerion Harvey. You can call me Fester. Um, that's a long story. We'll talk about that more. I am from a town called Mam, West Virginia. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder since I was 15. My grandfather was a preacher. I grew up around a lot of medical professionals. 
So while I am not a doctor or a nurse, you must understand that a lot of medical knowledge has naturally been absorbed into me by being surrounded by these people. Simultaneously, I rebelled against the psychiatric doctor's advice Some of that had to do with my family and their involvement in my medical treatment for better or worse. I love my family. I believe they had good intentions, largely. So that is what it is. Frankly, I can't even believe the things that are happening in my life. Uh, I'm very thankful for the life I've lived. I'm thankful to the Red Pill and to MGTOW. It was the final piece to the mental health philosophy that I started devising for myself all the way back. Probably early on as far as like 2008 or 2009 it started really, I started seeing through the fog, right? That I was gonna have to make some major changes. But some of those major changes involved being institutionalized for a while because some, some of those changes were easy to say the way it ended up happening was different because I was not well. And I had to kind of look cleanly at some things. One of them being that I am an investment of New York State as it relates to their medical system and, and mental health care and substance abuse and all that recovery. If you want to take them at the face value of a thousand dollars a day it takes to stay it is what it supposedly costs New York State to fund a patient being in some of these places then by the time I was 22 I was probably pushing at least half a million dollars of medical investment Binghamton State Psychiatric Center was one of the best hospitalizations I had, even though it was longer term, because they educated me. There was a huge deal of education, as in eight hours a day of classes. I was there in 2009. After I left there, I spent six months in a transition, transitional living facility. By 2012, I had devised a new mental health philosophy, which I would not get to actually impl implement into my life until 2014, because I was walking away from a toxic, dysfunctional relationship with a woman in a scenario where I had given up my own home to go start a new home with her, right? Now, hindsight's 2020. There wasn't nearly as much information back then. And while I'm very fortunate to have had the men in my family that I had, I also, by the age of 12, was living a thousand miles away from them with more so the influence of the world, for lack of a better word, better way to say it. So anyway, I want to get back to this Nashville trip briefly uh, when I was 19. Um, that trip, after I left, I, I went back to West Virginia instead of New York for a couple months, like a month, three weeks, something. And during that time, I'd said to my grandfather, who's now deceased, may he rest in peace, um, I said to him, you know, like, look, I don't have a problem working at all, but... What's more important to me is knowing that I'm doing what I was put here to do. And um, just kind of grappling with that, right? And I guess I've been grappling with it ever since, all the way up until 
recent months as I've started to see certain things come to pass. He put a book in my hands titled, uh, What on Earth Am I Here For? Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. If you've heard of this book or read it, then you probably have had your life changed by it, to be honest with you. Maybe you've heard of it, and just hearing that much, you know, you, you cringe. And so, if so, I'm not the channel for you, I suppose. Um, it was instrumental in my life, but I was not receptive to it at the time it was handed to me. Several years later, at around the time that I was about to walk away from that relationship into homelessness, I had been reading that book, Purpose Driven Life. So, I'm making this video to offer a shout out to men going their own way, to reestablish myself as a man going his own way, for better or worse, because I believe more men need to be willing to speak up on these things. And again, Mr. Tate, if you want to help young men, and maybe even women, although men, you need to understand women are a part of the matrix, but so, also, so are other men. And I also want to speak up for Mr. Tate, though, too. So I'm not, I'm not really, like, throwing daggers. I think Mr. Tate has done great work in the last few years. Simultaneously, he sort of has renounced the red pill. But Mr. Tate, we cannot escape the matrix and, and start to live in the real world if we're not seeing reality cleanly. And so, if you are still confused about this subject, then I offer you the red pill or the blue pill. Once you go down the rabbit hole of the red pill, will see things that you cannot unsee. But the truth shall set you free. I'm going to take this a step further and say that when you give it all to God, if you truly desire wisdom, if you truly want to understand it, then what do I do, God? Then you have to become willing to turn to another source can't turn to the world's advice. You can't turn to the advice of myself, to Mr. Tate, school teachers. You can turn to scripture. Now which Bible, which book do we read? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's the Bible. I don't think the Bible has a monopoly on God. I think that anybody of any faith should be willing, first and foremost, to truly dive deep into their own scripture and their own doctrine. You don't have to believe it all necessarily, swallow it whole, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. As it relates to then learning other religions, sure. But understand, you can't be an expert on everything. So, finally, in partnership with all of this, I will also be then going over a book that I was, uh, that was given to me at the start of this journey, early on in this journey, called Overcoming Fear, A Guide to Freedom by Roger Burnley. Mr. Burnley has decided to make it his purpose to help others who are struggling to find and develop the pursuit of their own purpose. So we'll be talking more about that. There are some... Um, some videos I'm releasing slowly, um, 
some of the work I've done with Mr. Burnley over the last few years privately. Uh, I anticipate him and I will be doing more work moving forward. Um, but I want, I want to again bring it back to then the music. Because that's really what this all, how this all started. And, uh, look, I'm, it's, it's music, okay? I value music a lot. Music saved my life. It gave me something to focus on. It gave me purpose. It gave me a, a thing to develop toward, right? And I'm going to be honest, early on in my life, my motivations probably a lot of times were not the purest or somewhat shallow or self-centered. That's fine. I own it. I've also been humbled a lot by life. I'll take you back to the fact that I spent a little while in some psychiatric wards. You know? But I've, um, I've, I've sought I've sought to understand my place in this world quite a lot and to understand my role as far as God is concerned as it relates to music, right? Um, because I've known that this is something that God sort of placed in my heart, but at the same time, I came from uh, an evangelical kind of background, man. And, like, straight up, I love Marilyn Manson. I love Slipknot. I think Corey Taylor is an incredibly inspirational person. I still don't ascribe to all his ideas. I, I don't know if I think he's a bad influence. I don't know if I think either of them are necessarily a bad influence. But I think a young person, if they don't already have a good foundation, they could easily be led astray by many entertainers. As... I was. The difference for me was that I was not simply misled, right? My grandpa was a preacher. I had I had men in my family who tried to teach me better. I went astray. I went to New York. Because I thought it would give me a better shot at making my dreams happen, right? And in truth, I would say at this point, it did. But I ultimately had to leave New York and go to Florida and start over, only for that to bottom out. And the reason is because before I went to Florida, I was financially trying to control everything. I had to make sure I had enough. It was always like, the irony being, I was in a better financial situation than I'd ever been in my life, more successful than I'd ever been. And yet, I was more insecure and fearful and strange as it related to money and these things. So I bottomed out. Every step of this journey from the time I left New York, I've been flat broke, man. I don't even know how to explain it to you. I can't even believe it's still working. I have finally managed to record a few of these songs to share with my fellow brothers in the MGTOW space who feel that maybe music in the last 20 years has gotten a little softer. Um, it's not metal. I, I'm not playing metal. I love metal, but it's not metal. It's, it's, I call it industrial folk rock. With like a little bit of a hip-hop influence. EDM influence as well. The, the EDM influence, that's more of a specific project that I gotta figure out how I'm going to present because there's some uh, licensing issues and copyright issues with it. I would love it if you would check it out. If you are a man out there who feels your voice has not been represented in the media, in entertainment, in music in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, give it a listen. The link's in the low bar. It's fester.bandcamp.com. I need to come up with, I believe it's $300. Probably $300 um, it's three hundred dollars to get to get these songs mixed and mastered. Although rea re realistically, I would like to go into the studio and tweak these tracks just a little bit more. Um, 
put some final touches onto it, which would, to do that would put me more around $1,000. So I don't know what kind of um, support I may be able to get, but uh, I just got this much done in the last couple of weeks. These are not mixed, they're not mastered. What's there on Bandcamp right now. Um, I am playing all the instruments on it. Um, I made it for you. So, I am Fester. We are reestablishing ourselves in the Red Pill space. Red Pill is not for losers. Red Pill is for anyone seeking the truth. And the truth is, is you may be a loser, though. You could be a winner in all areas, but still be looking at life through a blue pill lens. And if that's the case, you will be losing. Well, I guess that does make, does that make you a loser? Here's the thing. One of my long-term mentors, Glenda Cameron, taught me, don't hate the player, hate the game, learn the rules so you can win. So, with that, I am Fester, and I'm signing off.